We're visiting Lenovo at CES to check out their Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 5. And let's go somewhere a little bit quieter to talk about it. What? Now you might think me a fool, but I knew exactly what was gonna happen because this is the Plus Gen 5 Hybrid. And what does that mean? Well, that means it's not just a laptop that runs Windows, it's also an Android tablet. And cool, anybody can dual boot Android or emulate Android, but it's not quite like that. As you may have noticed, Windows is still operating. What the heck? Well, they've done some pretty clever work here and I'm really excited to talk about it. So. This laptop is powered by an Intel Core 7 Ultra 155H, which puts it kind of firmly in the thin and light category. Not the most powerful processor, but still Meteor-like and one of Intel's latest. It also comes equipped with 32 gigs of RAM on here. The laptop itself is made of aluminum with brushed aluminum on the sides. The bottom panel, however, is plastic, um, but it's still a very premium finish and I think looks pretty slick. It comes with a Thunderbolt 4 port on either side, as well as a combo headphone jack. We also see at the back, nothing but just some venting. We have lots of vents on the side, which bodes well for cooling, almost like our sponsor. Thanks to Be Quiet for sponsoring our 2024 CES coverage. If you're shopping for your next PC build or just new components in general, make sure to check out Be Quiet. Their premium products include power supplies, case fans, PC cases for said case fans, all-in-one water coolers, and high-performance air coolers. With Fruits in Germany, they've been in the industry for more than 20 years and specialize in making high-quality parts that are hard to hear. This year at CES, they're showcasing new white PC cases, white fans, and even white hard drive cages. Step into the world of quiet cooling with Be Quiet at the link down below. And one of the biggest giveaways is that this is a tablet, as you can see these cameras out here. We'll talk about those in a minute. Let's keep on the laptop front. The laptop itself contains two speakers, but when you are docked, you get to take advantage of the additional four speakers that are in the tablet. So you get six speakers. So theoretically, it could get pretty loud. Who knows how good it will sound? Again, thin and light laptops, not exactly famous for uh, sound quality. So right now we're hearing the audio from just the two speakers in the bottom of the laptop. And listen, it's pretty loud in here and uh, these don't sound very good. Uh, but when we attach our tablet, it starts playing the audio through all of the speakers on the device. The six, including the six on the side and the bottom. And it still sounds not that great. But you get to take advantage of a touchscreen. It comes with Lenovo Stylus. You have a great touchpad. But the real cool thing is that if, I, and if at any moment I want to switch, I can just press this one button and suddenly I'm an Android, baby. And now we have an entirely separate Lenovo tablet. We have a webcam on here and a webcam shutter, something that you typically don't see on a tablet. It uses a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is the highest that's currently available in tablets. It has 256 gigs of storage in its own right, and it has 12 gigabytes of RAM on top of the 32 gigabytes that are already in the laptop. Now, those are not shareable between the two operating systems. It's exclusive to this device. So instead of say like dual booting or even using a virtual machine, you're really literally just running two devices that combine into a convenient form factor. It runs Android 13 and I mean we're talking about the tablet which is also the screen so let's talk about that. They have a 2.8K OLED display that runs at 60 Hertz. Clearly being a thin and light they're not really going for the gaming aspect. It, they don't even tout a GPU. You're gonna be using your Snapdragon graphics or your Intel XE integrated graphics. On the top of the display is where you get to find your volume buttons. You also have on the bottom here a power button. Sadly, there's no fingerprint reader on this power button or anywhere on this tablet, um, but it looks like we have Windows facial recognition. It looks like you can take advantage of face and lock. I don't know if it uses the IR sensors that it will use for Windows Hello, so it might be less secure than the Windows version of the face recognition, but again, still nice to have some sort of biometric option here. And the cameras, two 13 megapixel cameras, that one is an ultra wide, a 0.6 times zoom, not sure exactly the degree of field of view, but we can go up to eight times, but that's just digital punching. That looks nasty. Uh, <laughs> um, but hey, it's a tablet. I've never used Lenovo's camera software, so I'm not gonna comment on that. But uh, I, I don't know what AI scan means. Stop putting the word AI where it doesn't belong, Lenovo. It's stupid. But now is where things get interesting, which is how the heck do we connect to the PC? Uh, we have two slots on each side that connect onto these plastic posts. And then here is where we have the connection. It's a proprietary connector, but it is display port as well as we have our charging port. 
and a data port for USB. So if you wanted, you could transfer a file via USB cable to your computer. But that would be super inconvenient, wouldn't it? They've actually thought about that and they include a 10 gigabyte hybrid folder. So anything that you have saved in the hybrid folder will be saved to both the 256 gigabytes of storage on the tablet as well as the one terabyte of storage on the laptop itself. It's basically doing a advanced kind of copy function and I asked Lenovo about the size. It's only a 10 gigabyte folder. It's not user adjustable, which is a little bit frustrating because say you're maybe, I don't know, transferring movies onto your tablet to watch, it would be nice to be able to have like a larger file. Or if you're shooting 4K video on those 13 megapixel cameras, maybe you have a lot of files that you want to transfer at once or have on both. It would be nice to adjust it, but I still think it's really cool because look at this, I just take this off and I can go to my hybrid folder here and I have the exact same Word document. Look at that, it's on both of them. When you have the tablet docked, you get to take advantage of the touchpad and the keyboard, but my Windows is being held hostage. They also thought of this, and it's not the most elegant solution. I would have loved to see some sort of like pass through between the two devices. But if we go into Windows, we're able to use something called Hybrid Stream, which will open up the Android tablet in a window so that I can use it. And you can still use it with a mouse. You can still click a text field and type in it. It totally captures it as well as even if I move it down here, I can still use it as a touch screen. So it's not as good. Another thing to think about is that this also has its own Bluetooth chip in it. It has its own Wi-Fi chip. This is the same deal. So you can be connected with a different set of mouse and keyboard to the tablet or here. One concern I would have is that maybe you have, you were using it in tablet mode with your mouse and keyboard maybe the transfer won't be that easy. I imagine Bluetooth's gotten pretty good about multi-point connections that the handoff should happen. I guess you would just activate it in Windows. Um, but it's just like all of these considerations about trying to make two devices talk together. It's pretty complex. One thing we realize is that if you turn off your laptop, it's not gonna turn off both the tablet. It will just turn off your laptop. So you'll have to remember to turn off both of them. However, if I press it just to put it to sleep, does that put both of them to sleep? Like if I lock it, I mean, it's acting as a single computer now, so we should be able to turn it back on. We're back. Now, one thing that they want to make sure that you don't do is carry this from the top of it and accidentally lose the bottom by dropping it, you know? That would be tragic. You're going to break a nice piece of hardware. So they actually do have a limit. If you go too far back, your tablet is now locked in, so I can pick it up like this. Um, if it's less than that or if it's closed, like this, I can't pull the top off by accident when I'm trying to shut it closed. Pretty nice. Obviously, there's still a little bit of software kinks to work out for them, but they got time. It's coming out in Q2 of this year, and it's going to be retailing for $19.99. They're only going to have the one SKU. It's not going to be customizable. It's just going to be 32 gigs of RAM with the uh, Intel Core i7 Ultra, uh, sorry, Core Ultra 7, uh, the one terabyte drive, the Qualcomm Gen 1 Plus in there, the 256 gigs of storage, plus 12 gigs of RAM, uh, plus the cameras. It's a lot, actually, for a $2,000 product. It's pretty dang cool. You also get the, you also get this guy. It's a slim and light form factor. What, were you, what do you want? It's a good looking display. They definitely got a good looking display. For me, what I think is really exciting about this is just there's so many use cases that like we could come up with, right? Like think about this. Say you're uh, somebody who has to do some rendering or you're letting a program compile and it's using up a lot of your resources on your laptop. You can always just switch to your tablet and then do other stuff like read documentation or anything else that you need there. Um, it also just gives you the benefit of carrying only one thing. If you are somebody who likes to carry a lot of devices, you just have to get your laptop. The weight of it's surprisingly uh, small. Man, this is so cool. And while there is two batteries in this technically, it's not like the tablet's gonna charge your laptop. Obviously, the laptop's gonna pass through energy to get to the display and it will charge the tablet. So it's not like you get a little bit of extra battery life on the Windows side. In the event that your Windows machine runs out of battery, you can switch to your tablet and still get work done. It's pretty smart. For me, this is the most convincing two-in-one laptop I've seen yet. I've always found that folding laptops 180 degrees makes them feel kind of bulky and makes them really hard to use as a tablet. But being able to just pull out and have your whole system in here and here solves all the problems because Windows has done this before, right? The Surface lineup 
involved attaching a whole tablet, like I think the original Surface Pro or something, was a big tablet, all of the internals were in the back, and you'd attach it to like a, a headless base that didn't do anything, which was a similar idea, but it solves the problem of making the bottom be like a useless keyboard. It's a whole other machine. And the price is fairly reasonable. You get two devices and a pen. But you know what else is reasonable? Subscribing to Short Circuit. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want more CES coverage, uh, I don't know, maybe this will be the last one that comes out, who knows? But subscribe.